I'm Olli Peters and I'm the Principal Investigator for the Ergodicity Economics Program at the London Mathematical Laboratory. The focus of this program is the ergodicity problem as it applies to economics. But as you will see, it's useful to think about ergodicity also in other branches of science. But why is this interesting in economics? To answer that question, we have to talk about some bits of the recent history of mathematics, meaning mathematics developed after the scientific revolution, roughly from the 17th century onwards. In the 1650s, mathematicians came up with the concept of expected value, and this immediately became an important concept in economics, most prominently in the pricing of financial products like life insurance. In the 1700s, people noticed that the concept doesn't always work. Sometimes the mathematical object, which mathematicians had named expected value, reflects what we might expect the value of some quantity to be, with the everyday meaning of the word expect. But sometimes the mathematical meaning and the everyday meaning don't coincide. As a consequence, when it came to individual behavior, people didn't act as the theory based on expected value predicted. This problem was fixed at the time with the tools available at the time, and something called expected utility theory was born. In short, expected utility theory acknowledges that we're all different. We each value money and risk and time and anything else differently. And these individual differences can account for the failure of expected value theory. It's a fix, but it comes at a cost. With individual cognitive or psychological differences at the core of the theory, it's very bad at making predictions. What I do doesn't say much about what you might do. Fast forward 150 years, and physicists start using randomness in their models of the world too. As they do this, they discover an alternative to expected value theory. Often, what matters is not what is mathematically expected, but what happens on average over time. The physicists called this the ergodicity problem. What's mathematically expected in the long run may be different from what's mathematically guaranteed to happen in the long run. If this sounds confusing, it is. The problem is that words and mathematics don't have the same meaning as they do in everyday language. This is the key insight. The mathematical expectation must not be confused with what happens in the long run. We use it in ergodicity economics to revisit the defining questions in economic theory to derive new answers to them, based on the mathematics of the 21st century rather than the mathematics of the 18th century. The results are astonishing. Mainstream economics is often criticized for its short-termism and a sort of heartlessness. In ergodicity economics, we find that the messages we get out of pure theory using modern mathematical tools are of a very different kind than the messages we get out of mainstream economic theory. Often, where mainstream economic theory declares someone's behavior a result of his or her character, ergodicity economics can explain it, predict it, provoke it, change it in experiments, as a consequence of someone's circumstances. To find out what this really means concretely, check out the videos in this channel.